Should I start the work? Okay. Uh, you, you know, I don't like to overemphasize the, the technological aspect of it. I mean, everything we do, there's technology, whether you're using a typewriter to write down your novel, whether you use your clarinet, which is also a technological invention, uh, even as basic as, you know, like paint and brushes, this is all technology contributed to that. I think what we're trying to do, both Kivork and I, is to hide the technology as much as possible. And we don't want uh, people to come to see the show just because it's technologically advanced. Actually, when when they describe it as this is very primitive and really like uh, pen and paper and an acoustic instruments, that's where we feel actually the most successful. Of course, uh, we use lots of technological devices, such as, uh, like Kivork mentioned, uh, lots of things are pre-recorded, uh, processed. Uh, there's spoken word that is blurred. Uh, same thing for, for Kivork's uh, visuals. Lots of animations that are uh, pre-made. But what we try is that we try to, to make it seamless between what's happening right now and what, what has happened before, which is the, the pre-recorded uh, things that are included in the performance. But at the end of the day, and uh, now with the, with the project, uh, you know, uh, that is actually no no longer just Kevork and I. We're joined by the fabulous Silk Road Ensemble. Everybody is an improviser. Everybody is a composer. Uh, the technological aspect is gone. I think we're trying to bring to the forefront the human element of what's happening. That's why it's actually incredible that we're doing live performances. I think live performances is a wonderful way to uh, to put technology aside and just see what happens when you actually blow air in an instrument, and then it produces sound. I mean, this is, of course, it's a physical phenomenon, but it continues to be amazing for me uh, that the instrument comes comes to life when you just put air in it. And uh, and whether the performance is successful or not, it's really hard to, to gauge that. I think we feel it's a successful, uh, you know, performance if it was moving. Uh, I think being moved by what we do is the most important. The time where we get to a performance and we're not moved, something went wrong. Maybe part of us uh, went on autopilot mode. Uh, we have to be moved. This uh, this is not, we don't have the luxury to be indifferent towards the work in the same way that we don't have the luxury to be indifferent towards the tragedy that inspired the work. I think at the end of the day, what we need to uh, show is a magic and time is changing and we need to learn uh, what's available technologically so yes uh, the reason I combined animation with you know with live the idea of what I create on a paper I wanted to continue to continue these, these lines for like almost like a dream like and move in and, and tell more and so when I create this animations, usually in animation take, let's say months to create a couple of minutes. And in a couple of minutes, I could create the entire drawing. So it's like, I'm, I'm using actually two very different approaches to tell you know, the, the story that we're, we're sharing. And yes, we are using uh, cutting edge technology between the software is, uh, is kind of designed uh, for my project. And I have a wireless MIDI, MIDI controller and I, and we need to have uh, monitors to, to kind of watch what we're doing. Otherwise, sometimes my hand can go out of the composition because the screen is behind us and we're watching the audience and we need to have uh, little video monitors to watch. So th those things are kind of uh, basically tools for us to kind of achieve this performance. And at the end of the day, two important elements. One, Kinan said, is the moving element. And the second, the performance need to have a magic. And I'm hoping that we're kind of achieving using today's technology and putting these two elements in it. 